Welcome back from an ad break, learners. So now we're going to do the application questions again. They are, they are still in, uh, dealing with the reactions between the metals and the oxygen. So now let's see what we have. Complete the table by providing the missing equations for the reaction between we have iron and we also have oxygen. Iron and oxygen. So remember that iron has a chemical symbol Fe with oxygen having a chemical symbol O, but then remember it is written as O2 because it's a diatomic molecule. So the word equation for this reaction will then be iron reacting with oxygen, reacting to form iron oxide. Now, the picture to show that now, this tells us that we have one, two, three, four atoms of iron that are going to react with one, two, three molecules of oxygen. Remember that oxygen is written as O2. So this represents one oxygen molecule. So we have one, two, three of them. Now, the product that is going to be formed is going to be, a, this is the product that is going to be formed between this is going to be, let's just create a space. Remember, the, 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 the purple circles are representing our, our oxygen. The white circles are representing our iron. So therefore, when we write the chemical compound, we'll start with the metal. So it's going to be Fe. And how many do we have of those? We have one, two. And then oxygen. And then we have how many? One, two, three. However, this is just one molecule of iron oxide. Because there's two of them, it means this equation was balanced with the two in front of the iron oxide. So now, we then now need to write the chemical equation to show this picture and also to better show this weight equation of the reaction between iron and oxygen. So this is going to be, remember, four. Or starting with just the general uh, symbols, we have Fe plus O2 reacting to form Fe. E, 2, O, 3. Then to balance the equation, remember, we need to start by writing out, start with the numbers that you have here in order to balance what you have. So we're seeing that we have two oxygen and then we have three oxygen. So we can start there to balance. In order to balance the oxygen, the two and the three, the, the, the most simplest number that we can use is the two. So that when you multiply the two and the three, it gives us a six. Then we know that now, when you multiply the three and the two, we can still get a six. Remember, two times three and three times two is equals to six. That is the commutative law. So therefore, you're going to use a three there. And remember, two times two is a four. That gives us four oxygen. And remember again, this picture determines what we have. We have four ox uh, iron metals and then we have three oxygen molecules, and then we have two iron oxide molecules. Next. Now, we are given the weight equation. We need to draw a picture of that weight equation, and then lastly, write the chemical equation for that weight equation that is given to us. Remember, magnesium is that element that is found in group two, and the ratio we know that is going to be metal to oxygen where the M represents the metal, and in this case being magnesium. And remember, M is not a chemical symbol for magnesium. So now, the picture, we are going to have one magnesium reacting with two oxygen. So we're just going to shade them to show the difference. Two, I mean, two oxygen atoms or one oxygen molecule to form a magnesium with the oxygen. So remember, we are shading the oxygen to show the difference of the atoms. So now, what are we seeing? Is it balanced or is it not balanced? We're seeing that we have one oxygen there, and then we have two oxygen there. And then we have one magnesium there, and we have one. So the magnesium is balanced. So in order for me to be able to balance the, the oxygen, I need to add in another molecule. Remember, I cannot just add an oxygen. I need to add another molecule of the magnesium oxide. So I'm going to do that, magnesium oxide, shade it. So there's two of them. So we now have two magnesium atoms on the right-hand side. Remember, this is your right-hand side. Two magnesium atoms on the right-hand side and two oxygen atoms on the right-hand side. So the oxygen is balanced, which means this is still fine. I can keep that as that, shade, shade. 
Now, because I have two magnesium uh, atoms on the right-hand side, that means here I need to have one, two magnesium atoms. So now, um, wait. So now that means if I put in the another ox uh, magnesium atom there, this is going to be one reaction. Let's just quickly fix that. So it's going to be one reaction reacting to form. So we have two magnesium atoms that are going to react with two molecules of oxygen that are going to form two molecules of magnesium uh, oxide. So now, what do we then have as our chemical equation? Is it balanced? Yes, it is balanced. So we need to just remove that because we do have it there. So now, now let's balance it using the chemical symbols. We have Mg plus O2 reacting to form MgO. So magnesium atom is going to, uh, when we're balancing this particular reaction, we're going to have, um, we said we need two there. This remains as one and this must be two. So two Mg, two Mg, two oxygen and two oxygen. So now that means this particular reaction or this particular um, uh, ratio, it is for elements in group one. And elements in group two will have the ratio of, of MO. Now, moving to our next question. We are given a chemical equation. We need to work backwards by drawing the picture and giving the weight equation. So now let's see what we have. So the question says, complete the table by providing the missing equation for the reaction between copper and oxygen. So if copper and oxygen, I have two atoms of copper, one molecule of oxygen that are going to give me two molecules of copper oxide. So picture, I need to have one, two copper uh, atoms that are going to react with the oxygen molecule. I can remember I'm shading it there so that it can be different from the other atoms. So when they react, they are going to give me a copper oxide and I need two of them because of that two. So there needs to be another one there. And there we go. Is the equation balanced? Let's see. Two uh, copper uh, atoms on the left-hand side, two copper atoms on the right-hand side, two oxygen atoms on the left-hand side, and two oxygen atoms on the right-hand side. So the equation does balance. So now how do we then write it as, as a weight equation? We are saying copper must react with oxygen to form copper oxide. There we go. So our last question, as you can see, it's a bit complicated because we're not given anything. All we are told is that zinc is going to react with oxygen. So we need to fill in the entire information from this table or on this table. So the weight equation for this reaction will then be zinc reacting with oxygen, reacting to form zinc oxide. Now, in terms of a picture of this particular reaction, we have zinc, one atom of zinc, that is going to react to, uh, with, uh, remember that oxygen, it is a diatomic molecule. It must uh, be written as two. Remember, oxygen must be written as two. So that's why I have two circles that are chemically bonded together to show that it's O2. And they are shaded because they need to be different from the atoms of zinc. And then the product of this is going to be zinc oxide. So it's going to be zinc with the oxygen. Oxygen must be shaded. Now, by looking at this picture, we are seeing that the number of atoms, remember we know that in any chemical equation, they must be balanced to say that the reactants must be equal to the, to the products. The number of atoms on the left-hand side must be equal to the number of atoms on the right-hand side. Looking at this picture, we are seeing that I have one zinc atom, one molecule of, 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 uh, of oxygen, but two uh, oxygen atoms. Then here I have one zinc atom bonded with one oxygen atom. 
So there is, a, there is an imbalance between the oxygens. So how do we then balance the oxygen? So to use pictures, let's see. If I add another zinc oxide here to shade the oxygen, that would now mean that I have two zinc atoms on the right-hand side. I have two oxygen atoms on the right-hand side, which now that takes, care, that takes care of that one. Because if you have two zinc atoms on the right-hand side, we are, I mean two oxygen atoms on the right-hand side, we still have two uh, oxygen atoms on the left-hand side. So that is balanced. But the zinc is not balanced because I have two zinc atoms on the, on the right-hand side, but on the left-hand side, I have one zinc atom. So what do I need to do? I need to add another zinc. So I need to add another zinc atom on the, on the left-hand side. So left-hand side, two zinc atoms, that's fine. Right-hand side, two zinc atoms, that's fine. Then here on the, on the left-hand side again, oxygen, there's two atoms of oxygen, fine. And right-hand side, two atoms of oxygen, that's fine. So now what does this picture tell us? It tells us that we have two, we have two zinc molecules or two zinc uh, atoms plus one molecule of oxygen that are going to react to form two molecules of the zinc oxide. So in terms of a chemical equation, in terms of a chemical symbol, how does it look like? So now we know that zinc has the chemical symbol of Zn plus oxygen, remember diatomic molecule must be written as O2, and then the product is going to be zinc oxide, ZnO. And again, the, the, the problem that we faced initially of the imbalance, it still comes here. But we have taken care of that already because we said in order for us to balance, we need to, uh, we need to have two molecules of the zinc oxide and one molecule of the oxygen reacting with two zinc atoms. So now you're seeing that we have two zinc atoms two zinc atoms. And remember that these two goes for everything in this compound. So we also have two oxygen atoms and two oxygen atoms on the left-hand side. So our equation is balanced. So our equation does balance. So let us remember, the reaction between a metal and oxygen is going to be, uh, is going to give us our metal oxide. There is a difference in ratio when the, when the metal comes either from group one elements or group two elements but there will always be a metal oxide, just a different ratio. Now, with all of that said, we are going to quickly take an ad break, and I'll see you just after this.